Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Friday edition of the learning series with HR Mentorship. We have one of our very own, somebody who is very special to me, Oluwatoye Kudumkum. I hope I pronounce your surname well. Maybe I'll come for Victoria. Today, she'll be taking us on overcoming career setback. As I was preparing for this session, I took time to go to a profile on LinkedIn. And something struck me I'd never noticed before because I've gone through our LinkedIn profile multiple times before now. I realized that she worked as a cabin crew, you know, with Virgin Nigeria for four beautiful years. I can imagine all the countries she must have traveled to. Perhaps, if time permits, she will tell us how she transitioned from that beautiful career line to HR. Tony also worked with Oz Consulting Group as a business development and manager. She worked with YOA insurance brokers for over six years. In fact, I will approximate it to seven years, where she was a senior human resource associate. Over the last one year, she has been working with the TVC Communications as a senior manager, people, culture, experience, and operations. She's a certified human resource professional. She's a member of the Chara Institute of Personal Management. She is also a member of the Human Resource Education Institute, where she backed the prestigious award of Senior Professional Human Resource International. She is not a stranger to this learning series. She has been here before. She is back today, and I promise her she will be back again by God's grace. Tony, <laughs> you have the floor. Over to you, my sister. Thank you so much, YA. I'm so honored to be here among my peers. Uh, my seniors, uh, and those who are coming up in the HR profession. Um, you know, when the when YA gave me the topic, I, I smiled because I think any single one of us here could actually would have something or other to say on this topic because career setbacks are something that is common to us all. We've all, you know, at one time or the other, experienced a career setback and we all had our way to deal with it. So I think I, I can sensitively say, I think I'm able to say actually that some of the things I'll be sharing tonight might actually be things that you've gone through but may not have been as conscious of them because we're all standing here today at different stages of our career and we all have to overcome one thing or the other. There's some of us here today who actually want to move higher in our career, but maybe for some reason or the other, we haven't been able to, and we may be in the midst of a career setback. The good news, like what you have said, is that never waste a crisis. I think that's the way you put it, sir. But these, these situations have a way of shaping and forming our stories. And I think it would be remiss of me uh, not to share mine. And I have to give some context because well, when we talk about things like this, we, we cannot afford to speak about it um, like separate from us. These are not things that other people go through. These are things that we all go through. And I hope we have enough time for some of us to maybe share some of those uh, setbacks we may have experienced. And maybe someone will have an answer today that will help you to stay, um, to, to hold on a little bit longer. Because as we say, these two shall. So, why I opened the floor for me uh, by saying that I started off my career as cabin crew with Virgin Nigeria. Uh, yes, I did go to several places in the world. It was, you know, when you're fresh from university and that is your first job, it gives you the illusion that all your jobs are going to be like that because it was very exciting. Um, it was, I think, more than the fact that I got to travel to different countries and meet different people and experience different cultures, it was more about the fact that it was a job that suited me so well. You know, it's like if there was Tony's blueprint, career blueprint somewhere, and they were looking for the perfect job for her, at that point in my life, that was like the perfect job. So it felt so effortless to me. I didn't feel like I was going to work every day. I feel like I was going to play, you know? Um, I was able to take to all the instructions very quickly. Uh, and by the grace of God, um, my supervisors recognized that I, had, that I carried something and they were, and they encouraged me to continue to strive more and do better. 
Uh, so I was among the first group of people that was promoted to senior cabin crew within the first six months of the airline's operation. It was a new airline, and there was a partnership with Virgin Atlantic Group. So Virgin Atlantic uh, Training Center trained us, you know, so it seemed like we were well set up to have a flourishing career. And then something happened. We call it the Nigeria factor, but I'm working to change my speech now because we believe for better. Um, some hanky panky came into play, some mismanagement came into play, and this airline that seemed so promising that, you know, had this, gave us so much hope, you know, gave us this, um, this sense of being ambassadors for our country uh, started folding up. And because of that, a lot of us were fearful about our job security. And I was one of those people who made the hasty decision to leave quickly. And I call it hasty, not because the decision to leave wasn't a good one, but because my actions were more motivated out of fear of being caught sort of with my pants down. Like I get to the office the next day and they tell us, oh, sorry, no more office for you. Everything has been bought over, everything is gone. And you know, there was no preparation. So my mindset was, if I went, if I, if I jumped ahead of the curve and I took care of myself before um, the whole thing collapsed, uh, I would be in a better position to negotiate my career. So the first job I got, I jumped into it quickly. You know, I actually felt a little bit smug, I have to confess, when saying goodbye to my colleagues, because a lot of them too were, uh, there was that sense of desperation, you know, we all wanted to find somewhere to go um, to have that job security, like I mentioned. So I got into this um, new job, and unlike my previous job, it was absolutely, <laughs> there was nothing about it that aligned with my nature. Two things were against me uh, in that job. And if I had uh, thoughts to slow down a little bit, you know, get a career coach, get some advice, you know, look at my options, I possibly um, would not have made such a decision, but I, I was very, very fresh out of school. I'd worked for about four years at the time, but I still had no clue about how to navigate, you know, the world of work. So I jumped hastily into another job. So I said there were two things that um, were, will I say, uh, clear uh, after I'd worked in that place for a while. The first was that unlike my first job, it had it, it, it did not align with my natural abilities whatsoever. Like it was like salt and it was like oil and water, and the two don't mix. I was ill-equipped, I was immature, I was inexperienced, and I didn't have a boss who was patient enough to, to let me grow into the role. So before I knew it, I had to say goodbye to that job. Some other factors were working against that job, I have to admit. So um, we live on the mainland, the job was the island, well on the island. And this was before, you know, Ambody sorted out the third mainland bridge situation. So if you wanted to get to work for eight, you had to wake up by like maybe four, get to the bottom of the bridge around 4.30 so that you could take the slow and arduous journey to the island. Some of us experienced it to some measure now, though not as badly. Uh, so in order for me to get to the, to the place early, I'd have to move my family to a location where accessing the bridge was, was much better. So I was having to deal with living outside of my house with my husband and my, my, my daughter at the time. And then I was working a job that um, where my boss, well, I don't want to call her uh, unethical exactly, but I think it was more to do with my ignorance. So um, the agreement was that I would resume at eight and close at five. But the nature of the job was such that, you know, it was this a virtual offices we let out spaces to business owners. And sometimes those business owners would work late. Now I was the center manager. So she felt it was my responsibility to close only after the last person had closed for the night. And sometimes that would be as late as 10. Sometimes it would be as late as 10.30 going to 11. Which meant that I would be getting home closer to midnight. Only for me to wake up the next morning 
at around 4.30 or 4 o'clock to start the whole journey again. Now, the first couple of days, I carry my bag at 5 o'clock, you know, wanting to beat the rush back to the mainland. And I saw that her countenance towards me was changing somewhat. And I wonder what was the problem. And like, I mean, I wasn't doing anything wrong. Only for me to get in a conversation where I was told, you know, anyone who is, you know, serious about her career doesn't close at 5 p.m. That was a, well, I didn't notice that red flag before I, I joined the organization. But what she was telling me was that it did not please her that I was leaving before the client left. And that meant that she expected me to wait that late. And it was just not working out for me. So eventually, I took the decision to leave that job. Now, did I have another job to go to? Not exactly. I had met up with a couple of friends, and we had decided to start off some sort of consultancy business. So I was one of about four partners. Uh, I was not in a position to be part of a consulting business then because I just didn't have the experience to manage such a thing. It was more of a, you know, uh, the, the, the drowning man's attempt to get to hold on to a lifeline by agreeing to be part of it. So it wouldn't seem to me like, oh, I was leaving a job for nothing. So I took that on wise step, you know, looking back at it. And of course, hey, I mean, you didn't have to be a player to, to know what was in the cards. Before I knew it, I was out of work. So here was me Tony, coming from a life of relative glamour, you know, flying out of the country at least every week, um, earning in Forex, all sorts of good things, you know, whatever it is that you imagine that lifestyle to be, it was it and more back then. Uh, and I, I became someone who was, who was jobless, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have um, any sort of work for a couple of months. And trust me, it wasn't easy. Um, I could go you know, fine to my background, but you see, I, I was, I'm this sort of person that, um, you know, you, you feel like you, you, you live under a, a charmed star. Everything seems to be working well for me in my life. But I, I experienced a couple of life setbacks, but that's, you know, topic for another day, but somehow things seemed like they were working out for me. So I was suddenly caught adrift and I didn't know what to do. I was, um, I was confused. I mean, I had support from my husband and from my family, but you know, you, you get to a point where you keep on start asking yourself, was this me? Is it only me? You know, like from someone who felt like the birds used to sing over her head every day, it now became like everything that was bad would happen to me. Like if there was, if I applied for a job, I almost, I didn't expect it all because I had I'd gotten that mental state and my, my self-esteem had gone so low that I didn't even think I had anything to offer. I mean, after all, if I had something to offer, why would why would I be you know jobless? And you know those rejections that come over and over and over have a way of eating at your soul, <laughs> one way or the other. You just begin to feel like um, you have no value to offer. Nobody wants you. So it was a pretty dark time, and I thank God that He didn't He didn't let me go at that time, and He sustained me and helped me to rally. But that's not where I'm going. So. While I was there, I had to start asking myself some questions. That, Look, you are in this place, but you are not powerless. Uh, at least you have some skills because you, 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 you held a job for four years and you did extremely well at it. So why not look for how to use some of the skills you have to create uh, uh, a, a, um, a, a point of view for yourself? Where that, where, whereby people could associate you with that thing, right? So I was coming from the airline, so that was a customer service, customer experience role, right? Um, I couldn't, I hadn't been able to get a job till then, but I was someone who writes. So I said, why not write about some of my experiences, create scenarios and prefer solutions? So I started a blog. Once I started doing that, then I, I come across a uh, customer service certification uh, run by a gentleman, um, J.D. Babasunde, and he had a consulting um, outfit. And I was able to pay for it. Thank God for, you know, a supportive spouse. Uh, we put the money together because finances were also quite tight at the time. 
and I was able to do the training and I did so well. I think I was top of my class. And I mentioned this because that went a long way to raise my self-esteem and remind me that I was indeed a person of value, that just because I had experienced something unexpected and frankly, coming from where I was coming from, didn't wasn't something that people would ever think would happen to me. But then, of course, don't we always think that? Uh, didn't mean that um, suddenly I didn't have any value, suddenly I had nothing to offer the world. So I passed those certification exams and I continued writing my blog. Um, shortly after that, I was contacted by someone that I knew, I'd known from my, uh, from my secondary, my university days, and he had an opening in this consulting firm, the consulting firm that um, YA read out, and he wanted me to manage the customer service desk. Uh, because of the blog I've been running and the evidence that I knew, that I demonstrated, that I knew what I was about when it came to customer service. And that is how I got into consulting. From there, I got into HR and then the rest is history. Of course, there are other setbacks I have had across, um, along my, my life and my career. That wasn't the only one. But I decided to open the session by, 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 starting, by starting this way, to let you know this. Setbacks are going to happen in your career. It is a given. These are things that everybody experiences one way or the other, in one fashion or the other. But how you address or approach the setbacks makes the difference between it becoming something that lifts you or something that pushes you down. Uh, I, I hope I can share slides if I can now. So I'm going to share my slides now. It, not because I feel that um, we necessarily need to, uh, to, be ex to be extremely academic about this, but because if you're like me, a number of these things we know, but because we don't recognize them and because we don't um, give some, some, some shape or some body to them, it tends to escape us. And then we don't give it the kind of attention that we need to when we are in, this, in these times of our lives. Because of that, the assets that are available to us, the resources that are available to us, we don't take advantage of them. And consequently, maybe some of these setbacks last a lot longer than they need to. Maybe we find ourselves in those depressive states of mind longer than we need to be. Maybe we have people who are willing to help or platforms that we are, we are able to access that we don't look at or recognize because we, we don't have this understanding that they are available. So that would be the reason uh, I would share slides tonight so that when we can take a look at these things and you know, have them in our, in, our, in our hearts and in our minds, if at all we come across another career setback, we'll recognize that we have resources and we have things at our disposal get out of that state even faster. Because guess what? The fact that we've had some career setbacks in life doesn't mean we're never going to have any. Okay? So we're going to be talking about overcoming career setbacks today. Okay. So um, I've learned in recent times that it's always good to start with definitions of things. Because another issue is if we assume we know what something means, um, and we don't examine it closer, we tend to lose, we might lose the meaning or lose the impact of it. So a setback is an event that delays your progress or reverses some of the progress that you have made. I'm going to add a caveat to this and say that this is a perception, right? Um, if you permit me, the good Bible says that you will have tribulations. So life is going to give us hard knocks. We are going to have those lemons that you know that you know the cliche says turn lemons to lemonade. These things are going to happen, and when they do, we tend to feel a loss of identity and purpose. Some people's careers are so intertwined with their personality, like they're so defined by their career that when something happens to shake that that um, that state that they they're in, they sort of lose. They they, they get so flustered that they lose direction for a bit, right? You feel things like shock, denial, and some people, for some people, that state of denial lasts much longer than it ought to. 
you're, you're afraid, frustrated, sad, all sorts of negative feelings. However, from that personal pain can come an amazing growth experience that allows you to overcome difficult challenges, embrace vulnerability and transparency, and feel the joy of becoming a better you. Now, why I said it, I said it before, I have to re-emphasize it again because it is, when we're in the thick of it, it is so difficult for us to think that, oh, there's something good that can come out of this. But I can assure you that whenever we come to these points in our lives, when we go through fine periods, they serve to make us stronger, more resilient, and they tend to reveal things about ourselves that we never knew before. So what sort of things can be set back when it comes to career? Uh, we are aware of some of these things, I'll just mention them. So you could have been passed over for promotion, you went to someone else. Meanwhile, you've worked in that place for a number of years and you feel that um, you deserve it. Uh, maybe there didn't be some indications that it was coming your way and then suddenly somebody else gets it and it doesn't come anymore. Um, you had a query uh, that eventually goes into your file. So it's like a black mark against you. In that, in that place of work. Some people are victims, well, I don't call it victims, <laughs> uh, but experience redundancy. The company is downsizing or right sizing, like they say, and they let some people go. Uh, your career is not moving as fast as you think it should. Maybe you're, you're kind of comparing yourself with people you went to school with, or people you feel are your contemporaries in your field, and they appear to be doing better. If you're an entrepreneur, your business is not growing. Now, there are not, a lot of us have side hustles now. We have a nine to five and we have something we're doing at the side. So while you are there, you know, working to make progress to the nine to five, you now have your side hustle that is not growing as fast. So the whole purpose of it being another stream of income doesn't appear to be coming to fruition. Then there's some medical issues that affect people. There are some ladies who because they got, got pregnant or they wanted to grow their family at some portion of their lives, uh, take a career hiatus, which is also stated there. And by the time they come back, it's like the world has moved beyond them and they seem to be the ones stuck or they're, one, they're the ones playing catch up, you know. There are also some personal issues that happen, things in the family, maybe an illness in the family, divorce, you know, a death in the family that hits you hard and, you know, uh, it takes you a while to kind of find your balance and bounce back. And of course, there's the termination of employment. These are just examples uh, of things that could be career setbacks, which some of us may have experienced in our careers thus far. Now, what is the impact of these setbacks? We have talked about some of the negative emotions that can come up and the negative impacts on us, lack of confidence, low self-esteem, you become this pessimistic person or you become resentful and bitter, especially if in the case of like a promotion, someone went ahead of you, you may not um, be able to sort of deal with that person the way you used to deal with the person before. But there are positive impacts now, and I mentioned before that it's a question of perspective. Which side of the coin are you looking at? You can become more resilient. You can take more knocks. You can bend, but refuse to break. You can become more humble. You know, there are some things in life that, that tend to humble us. I think those of us that reside in Lagos can testify that Lagos traffic has a way of humbling people, right? Wherever you're coming from, Lagos traffic will show you that it's a leveler. <laughs> Much like university, Lagos traffic becomes a leveler of humanity. It can, it can make you more agile in your learning. Because sometimes we have to pivot pretty quickly. Maybe you realize that some aspect of your, this, this career line you've been following wasn't getting you the fulfillment that you needed, and you have to learn some new skills or something. And so you pivot to say, begin to learn, find it easier to learn. And then, you know, your learning curve begins to, you know, flatten. You gain new skills. Um, like I mentioned, if you wanted to pivot, for instance, or if you found out that one of the reasons you missed promotion was because you know, there was some skill that you lacked. And so you take yourself through learning that skill so that you position yourself for better opportunities. You can make new connections, you know, expand your network, meet more people who can now appreciate um, your value, where you're able to effectively demonstrate your skills and they recognize 
that there's something you can bring to the table. It's increasing your willingness to try new things. Because for some of us, it's a once bitten twice shy thing. It's like, look, I was in this particular state when this step back came and it looked like I wasn't prepared for it. Now I have to prepare, I have to put myself in a position where if I was hit or knocked by something else, it's not going to discomfort me the way the other one did. So you are more willing to try new things. Self-discovery and awareness. I usually say to myself, whenever I come against something that seems tough, that these tough situations come to me to, put, to take something out of me and to put something inside of me. So there's this thing um, around self-discovery and awareness that comes when you hit a, a tough spot, like a, a, a setback in your career. And of course, uh, it helps you to give direction to others because what you experience, you can now show people how to get through that particular thing. This is a quote by a gentleman called Bob Green. He says, setbacks are bumps in the road. They are not the end of the road. As long as there is a tomorrow, there's an opportunity to start again. Now, so we're talking about overcoming career setbacks. And I'm tempted to ask people, I know that a lot of us have, have had career setbacks um, from when we started in the workplace to, to, to date or the marketplace to date. I mean, if we have, can I get yeses in the chat, in the chat room? If you've, if you've experienced some career setbacks, please let's have some yeses in the, in the chat room. Uh, so that I know I'm not alone here. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Deborah, for, for letting us know. Um, there'll be an opportunity a little later for us to, to um, if we're comfortable, you know, share or summarize whatever that setback is, because we can also learn lessons from you. Oh, thank you so much, Gift, for being vulnerable and sharing that. Thank you so much. Uh, we can learn lessons from you as well, and people here who maybe in similar circumstances can learn how either you are coping with it or what you did to get through it. Okay, so there are things that you should not do. I'm gonna talk about the things that we should do when we've done, those of us that have experienced career setbacks, uh, but there are some things that we shouldn't do that we find that, that we, we are tempted or the temptation to do it is so strong. And sometimes I have to admit some of us fall for those temptations. Number one is that we tend to blame others. You know, we tend to look outward and say, this person or that person is the reason why we didn't make it. Oh, it's because my boss doesn't like me. Oh, it's because my organization is toxic. Oh, it's because my leadership isn't forward thinking. Oh, it's because I didn't have enough money to pay for that certification that would have, you know, uh, bumped me up in, 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 in um, my qualification. One reason or the other, we, we tend to find someone or something to blame for that setback. But the challenge with that is that it's, it's, it's almost a guarantee that you will not learn from your mistakes. As long as you begin to think that um, it's somebody else's fault that you had that setback. And the truth is that we tend to become unattractive to other people when we become resentful and bitter that whoever it is that we're choosing to blame did ABCD to us, and then others may not be willing to offer us any help, you know? Because as far as we're concerned, we're in that state of denial where, oh, it's that person's fault, it's that boss, it's whoever, that colleague that stole my idea, one thing or the other. So we should, we should, we should, I'm trying to look for the word, not kick against, guard against blaming others when it comes to a career setback. It is very true, actually, that some person or the other may have played a part in you having that career setback. But because you are the one running the race, it doesn't help to invest your energy resenting or hating or, 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 or keeping that person uh, in unforgiveness because you have not moved further than you thought you should. The second thing is not looking within. Now, this could almost be the yin to the yang of blaming others. When you focus all the blame externally, you avoid looking within because some of us don't want, don't like, may not like what we see. 
we then we then uh, try to avoid asking the tough questions. Was there something I could have done? Did I take this job for granted? Was I depending more on who I knew than what I could do? Should I have made that sacrifice and gone for that certification? But instead, because, you know, maybe I'd worked in the organization for a while, I felt I had a lot of influence or I had a lot of, um, of, um, of, of net, I made a lot of connections. I could have that promotion and didn't, didn't um, want to go through the trouble of paying for some certification or something. It's a tough thing to do. And, and I, have to, I have to tell you, you know, in the beginning when I shared one of my several career setbacks, I told you that when I made the switch to the other job, I was inexperienced, I was immature, I didn't um, look for the kind of advice I should have. This was a product of self-reflection. If you had asked me at the time, I would probably have blamed the company for folding up. I would have blamed the Nigerians for being the way they are and they couldn't just, you know, even with foreign help, we couldn't let this thing, you know, float. I would have blamed the people who, you know, didn't give us a heads up. Instead, they were cutting our salaries back and forth. I would have blamed the boss that I started working with and said, oh, because she was a nasty woman, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But because I had to take a sit down and ask myself some deep questions, be vulnerable even to myself, you know, be open to myself, I realized that there were some things I certainly could have done differently. So if you, just, if you find yourself in a position where you have a career setback and you don't sit down to identify habits or character traits that might have contributed to the incident, right? you will not find yourself in a better position to make the change that will prevent things like that from occurring again. So blaming others doesn't help. Choosing to focus externally and not looking within doesn't help. The next thing that we tend to do sometimes is to refuse help. And this happens if you happen to be someone like me who was a high achiever, um, intelligent, did well in school, seemed to have everything working for me. Um, and possibly because I was so, will I say confident in my abilities, uh, and I'd actually overcome another setback uh, you know, in my life earlier. I, I, I just thought, you know, I didn't really need help. I didn't really need to ask questions or, I mean, did I need to? I, I mean, the job, the cabin crew job, my parents didn't help me get it. Nobody really helped me. It was a friend um, that I made during my youth service that helped me, that told me about the job. And that was literally all she did. Everything else was just me and God, you know. So, you know, it came to a point where I felt, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've done this before. I found a job without effort before. So, I mean, I literally went from NYSC to work. So there was no, no, no time where I was out of work, you know, out of the after NYSC, like some people would be. And to be honest, I think that was a secret fear I had at the time, too, that I didn't want to join the legions of, uh, graduates who are still, you know, slapping the streets looking for work. So when I got that opportunity, I ran into, I mean, grabbed it with both hands. And I was so thankful that I did not lose a moment after my NYC before I started working. So, you know, I I was not just thinking, you know what, I have it figured out from the appreciable experience. So I didn't seek for help. Maybe I shouldn't say I refuse help, but I didn't seek for help. But some people refuse help. They don't seek feedback from others. They don't ask others, you know what, could I have done this thing differently? You know? Meanwhile, those people may, may be able to offer insights uh, that you overlooked or didn't even consider, you know? Some of us don't know how to take criticism. Even if it's constructive, all you are hearing is that I didn't do it right, I didn't do it well, I lack in some way. And depending on what your personality is, because some personalities are more, uh, find it more abhorrent than others, you just shut off, shut everyone out and just refuse to ask for or accept help. 
And then the other one is you are inflexible. You know, the way I've done it has got me this far. Why do I need to change? Right? I don't need to do anything different. I don't need to adapt. All I need to do is to continue to do what I've been doing. This was just a fluke. This was just, you know, a bump on the road. I can continue doing what I've been doing all the while and I'm going to get, you know, the same level of success that I had before the setback came. But some people find adapting intimidating. You know, when we, uh, we do things in change management, we talk about barriers to change management. And some of those barriers are mental. You know, most of them are mental. Some of them are cultural. People don't want to change because it's a lot of effort. If you've ever tried to break a bad habit, you will know that it's easier to give in to the bad habit than to work towards adopting a better habit. So people don't want to change. And because of that, they, 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 they resist um, taking steps that involves them doing something different, right? For those whose identities are wrapped up in their work, it's so much worse because then the job is them and they are the job. So when the job isn't working out the way it's supposed to, it takes them a while to let go and admit or accept the fact that they may need to do something different. So opening yourself up to new ideas and new ways of doing things could be the catalyst to getting your career back on track. You adapt what I believe we're all um, familiar with now called the growth mindset, where we recognize that when these challenges, these setbacks, these, these obstacles come, it is not a failure, but an opportunity. I believe we heard the Thomas Edison code that said that he didn't fail um, 10,000 times to design the light bulb. He, he found 10,000 ways not to do it, you know? So we need to be flexible. We need to adopt a growth mindset in order to quickly overcome career setbacks. Now, what are the things that we should do, right, in trying to overcome the setbacks? I'll reiterate one of them that I've mentioned already is that just understand that these things happen in life. It's the nature of the world that things will test us, right? If we're going with the Darwinian, you know, um, understanding of, of, you know, human evolution, they say things about survival of the fittest. Those that survive were the ones that adapted, you know, but we know, you know, it's the way we are as human beings, we have a way of adapting to survive. Okay, so these things will happen, and what it calls for is for us to adapt so that we can survive. The second thing is acknowledge your feelings. I mentioned that one of the negative impacts of this thing is denial. You know, people try to act as if, you know, it didn't happen, it can't be happening to me, even when all the red flags are there. For some, even when the evidence is there, you still don't want to believe you don't want to accept it so you need to recognize and admit your emotions if you feel like a failure let the emotions come but what is wrong what would be wrong is for you to allow them to overwhelm you and that is why it's so important to have a support system someone you can trust someone you can talk to someone who can help you to to someone who can remind you of who you are that person of value that person who achieved so much in their career until that moment when that thing just shook their confidence. You need those people around you. And you know you don't have to wait until you have a setback to begin to develop that circle of, of support that all of you can help each other whenever you come across um, something in your career that you never expected. So take some time to explore unresolved issues that often surface in times of stress and, and, and setback. You know, um, we talked about being introspective. So yes, listen to yourself, but also recognize that you will not be able to trust yourself entirely at this time because of what you've been through. So talking to someone you trust who can tell you the truth and tell you in love is extremely important. And remember that no matter how disappointed, upset, angry, or discouraged you are right now, 
like we said this day, these two shall pass. Then once you've resolved your feelings, then sit down and think, what exactly went wrong? What did I do? What didn't I do? Right? But while doing that, understand that there are some things that are within your control and some things that are outside of your control. For instance, redundancy is not entirely within your control. For the business to continue, they have to let people go. If you happen to be one of the ones they let go, it may not be something necessarily that you do. It may just be the way the cards fell at that time. All right? So recognize that some things are not within your control. So make as thorough of an assessment of the situation as you can so you can maximize the learning and move forward, right? If there are mistakes to be corrected, correct them and reduce the damage as much as you can. And this is especially if what happens to you affects other people. If there are things you can do to make things easier for them, it would be a great idea to, you should go ahead and do that. So that even doing that thing and making something better for some, someone else, you know, lifts you and gives you that um, positive energy that you need to push through your own um, emotional um, and professional scars that these sort of career setbacks bring our way. Then expand your view of success, right? Um, success is not necessarily a promotion, right? You may have been given a job expansion as opposed to a promotion, and it's the experience you gained on that job that sets you up for the better job that you got or sets you up to come to the notice of someone maybe within your field that was willing to give you an opportunity to advance your career. So expand your view of success. Success is not just one thing. Everybody defines success differently. For some women, for instance, success is raising children who are god fearing responsible, successful, even if they didn't reach heights in their career um, at that point in their lives. That's success to them. For others, success is attaining those heights in their career. So expand your view of success and remember that the situation you are facing is not a reflection of your overall value as a person. Don't define yourself by your setback. Put it to perspective. It's only one incident in a long career that you will have by the grace of God. View it as a problem to surmount. Focus on the future opportunities that are now open to you because of this setback. Then take action. You know, once you've identified the factors that contributed to setback, develop an action plan and then create a vision and strategy for your career. You know, I, I say to myself, Tony, you have to have a back pocket exit plan. And what I mean by that is not, you know, resigning my job or whatever, but that if I, if I, if I come to a, a, a bump in the road or I, I get a hitch, you know, in my career uh, and it's not going the way I want it to be, what is my plan, plan B, you know, or plan C or plan D? That's what I call my back pocket exit plan. It doesn't necessarily mean an exit per se. It just means it's something that you can do when the other thing doesn't appear to be going your way, right? Break down your strategy into a detailed career plan and develop smart goals. And I, and I have to let you know at this point that sometimes these goals, they don't have to be high polluting, they don't have to be huge and lofty goals. You know, the goal that you set for yourself could simply be being able to hold your head up high to go back to work after you lost out on the promotion. Being able to stretch out your hand and shake the hand of the person who got the promotion you felt that you deserved. That itself is a goal. And that if you achieved it, then you've done something monumental and taken one step closer towards overcoming that uh, career setback. So working for Fortune 500, that's a fantastic goal and by all means go for it. But that doesn't have to be your immediate goal after a career setback. In fact, for some people, I'll go so far as to say it could be a, um, uh, what's it called, a rebound 
goal. You want to prove that you can do something big because you've experienced something bad, right? But take it one step at a time. Don't rush yourself because it's important that the person who moves forward from that setback is a better version of yourself than the person who endured the setback. Start working to, towards your goals now. It will give you a focus. And as you achieve each and every step, your self-confidence will increase. Then, of course, you need to strengthen your skills, right? Use it as a chance to become even better at what you do. You recall I mentioned that after all the months of having no work, you know, the blow to my self-esteem, the, 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 you know, the, the dance with depression, I asked myself, what am I good at? And when I identified, look, it was my service inclination that made me so good at my previous job. I asked myself how I could apply it to my current situation. I didn't have any help. But was there something I could do using the skills that I got? And that is how I started the blog. And that is how I got the attention of someone who was able to give me a job, right? Do a self audit and identify the gaps you need to bridge. Your manager, coach, or mentor could be someone who can help you with that. Which is why, you know, a lot of times we say it's important to have a mentor, a coach, somebody that can advise you as far as your career is concerned. You know, it is not a fact. It is literally someone who can help you with that back of the exit plan I told you about and just say, you know what, why not do this in the interim? It gives you a focus. It lifts you, and like we said, it builds your confidence, gives you the energy to move forward, right? Ask if you need to update the skills that have served you well so far, or you need to pivot and learn some new skills that are more contemporary in line with the sort of jobs that are in demand now. This setback that looks like such a big thing or a bad thing is an opportunity for you to do that. A lot of us will agree that COVID allowed us to press the pause button in our lives. Many of us were, you know, struggling, striving, it was a rat race, we know how things were prior to COVID. And then COVID came, and whether we liked it or not, we had to stop. And we had time on our hands, right? And it made a lot of us creative and think, you know what? I, I'm not able to go to work now. How else can I add value in my field? And it, it was what birthed a lot of ideas for some people and created communities and platforms that are still in existence today, even though, you know, COVID is, though, that, that, that state of COVID is now a thing of the past, yeah? So ask yourself those questions. Do I need to update my skills? Are my skills still relevant? Do I need to do something else? And if I do, where can I find it, yeah? Explore new interests and the new skills you will need to pursue those interests, right? And then build your resilience. Life is a series of highs and lows, troughs and crests. Something else is gonna happen at some point. So you can't let this one be the one that knocks you down. By the grace of God, you still have many, many more wonderful years in your career to come. So you have to build the sense of the resilience and, and fortitude, both mental and physical, that will help you weather any other storm that may come your way. Develop healthy habits and create a beautiful system, like I mentioned before. I said that the perspective that you bring in the situation always matters. So be optimistic about your future. Remind yourself of the value that you have to offer. Adopt the habit of regularly assessing and reassessing yourself so you can anticipate how you will respond when the situation is not working out the way you want it. And remember to always focus on the things you can control. Because if you worry about the things that you can't, the economy, rising prices, things like that, it's going to give you the kind of stress that you don't need, right? So yes, the price of things have gone up. I, 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 I can't testify to that. <laughs> so instead of worried about the, being worried about the fact that I can't buy in bulk like the way I used to, I just allocate a certain amount to my weekly purchases, right? If I used to buy 8,000 IR pepper and the 8,000 IR pepper is now 
15,000 hours per day. Then I'll be buying paper for the week instead of paper for the month. I, I guess you understand what I'm trying to say. So focus on what you can control. And, and don't, you know, sit down and give yourself the mental gymnastics of oh, how we do things have changed. Because things will always change. If there's anything that is constant in life, it is change, right? And if we keep on worrying, getting worried that things will change, we'll, you know, fall into what we call analysis paralysis. When you analyze, analyze in, in the sense that you're anticipating what sort of changes might come and how you would deal with them if they did come. I think that is all I have today. I, I do believe that we may have one or two other things we need to talk about. So please, if anybody here has a question, I'm happy to answer the questions. Or if you have a career setback uh, that you be uh, comfortable sharing and how you overcame it, that would be fantastic so we can all learn and share from you. It could also be that you're currently experiencing a career setback and you would love uh, to get some perspective on it if you are comfortable sharing that please do so as well thank you so much for listening why are you over to you sir? thank you so much for this has been very my network has not been very friendly. I've been expecting again to be an opportunity. I have a strong inner witness that one or two people here today will have one or two stories to share. Please don't be shy. Okay. One, when you share your story, not only will you feel better, but will also help one or two other people. We'll start with the first person that has indicated interest to share or maybe ask a question. Don't let me prompt her. Deborah Dumbre, please you have the floor. Okay, so I would like to say thank you very much to the facilitator of today. Um, I want to share just quickly my experience with regards to setback. Yes, I once experienced one and it was a big hit for me because um, I got back to Nigeria in 2017 and I'm not married, so I was working with First Bank. At some point on the island, at some point in the same year, I got married and it was hectic, so I had to stop working. So bank was not what I planned. I was still trying to find my feet after my master's degree, like where should I go into, what should I do? And at that point where I had to stop, just because of the stress, I had to take a pay cut on the mainland and I was complaining every day. In fact, it was like a setback that I created for myself. I was complaining daily and the jackpot syndrome was not really much as it is now that you get jobs easily. So I was just stuck at um, a job on the mainland and I was so complaining. So my spouse had to help me at that point. It was, he had to help me like register CIPM, like do exams. I was like, what is this one doing? Like, I'm not planning for this. Like I'm getting a pay cut. I'm not happy with it. You are saying I should come and do exam. Um, CIPM, I'm not interested. Brought books, registered me as a student member. In fact, to that, to, to, to show that I wasn't really interested. I recently, I didn't do any exam until this year, 2022 from 2017. So I wasn't happy. At some point, I moved again to another job. I was still not very happy, but I thank God because I, I was surrounded by friends who really helped me. And at some point along the line, I met a friend who has not even started anything. Like at least I've started something. So that made me like, I was courageous. I was happy that, oh, so there is somebody that I'm better than. Okay. So that made me, that was what, gave me that click of, okay, good. It's like you are better than someone. So you have that edge. Even if you have a setback, you took a pay cut, you were not happy with it. I kept complaining, like getting to a depression state, like, you know, and thank God I met the friend that still finding his feet and with colleagues as we were mates in school. And I was so happy. Then I had to go for the exams this year and I came out past everything. Thank God to my colleagues to acquire me and it was all good. So I'm glad today that I'm flying from one job to the next as I like, you know, do not good, but I'm still like finding my feet somehow, but I'm, I'm not complaining of a pay cut. I'm not complaining of anything. So I so, so, so I'm so happy. Then I found Solens also in um, HR mentorship. 
I found friends and families there. I found mentors there. I'm so glad that I've found my feet at last. So I want to use this medium to encourage everyone. You might be going here and there, not understanding where you are going, customer service the next day, you're in the banking sector, the next day you're marketing, you're in business development. Don't worry. Very soon you understand where you are heading to. It happens to everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much, Deborah, for your for sharing. It's sometimes very good to feel very comfortable to be vulnerable. Not only you feel a body lifted, you also lift and light up the life of others. I'm also excited. I can see two hands quickly. I'll call the first hand I saw. Then we'll go to the other person. Irumba Okelo, you raised your hand first. Please, you have the floor. Irumba Okelo, then Adeli Kanawa, be on standby. Over to you, Irumba. Okay, Irumba is not the regular guest. So we will take him off the line. Okay, I'm also removing. Okay, so Adeli Ken. Let us go to Adeli Ken. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Loud and clear, Adenike. Good evening. Thank okay, you. Okay, so sorry, my background's a bit noisy, though, but can yeah. We'll take that as a step back. Please go ahead. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to please share my story. I, I think I aligned myself a lot, well, kind of with the speaker. So I had finished with, um, I'm a lawyer by practice. I had finished with a very good grade in school, you know, high flyer waiting for the world to take on the world and then marriage happened of course that was like a setback for me i didn't get into the career system immediately and the minute i got there i thought that it was one bad thing after the other and you know uh, i would take a job in three six months i've lost it there wasn't anything i was doing wrong it was just okay sorry we don't need your services anymore right now or something would just happen but it was a really bad period for me but I kept, you know, I think my resilience and maybe my father's spirit was just in me. And I had this, I could just, you know, go for everything and anything I wanted. I think that was what really kept me. But in the past five years, my career has been stable and I'm really grateful. So having to hear the speaker and everything, it feels like it's relatable. Like, you know, when you feel like the world is on your shoulder and it's just everything bad is happening to you one, thing, one day after the other. But it's been, it's been stable now and I really appreciate it. I also took some steps, like she said, taking steps. I decided to move into HR, private into HR. I started taking CIPM exams. I joined the Gritty Plus, um, what's it called, platform, which kind of helped me to meet more people in HR. Um, it was one of the groups I saw, Mr. OA, and I'm grateful for this opportunity and the platform to be here. I'm really learning. It feels like I'm a beginner, basically, but it's really like, this, this platform has really helped me and I'm grateful. Thank you to the speaker. Thank you for... Thank you so much for sharing. All right. no way, well, not... Thank you so much, Adini Kerr, for, for sharing. We'll go to Omeneko. I hope I pronounced that right. You have been unable to um, unmute, please. Omeneko, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to the speaker. She did a very good job on this presentation. It's so insightful and I'm happy that I'm part of this um, program. Um, first of all, I want to start with a question. I have a question. I just want to find out, I want to know, will I, will, is career stagnancy the same as career, career setback? Mm -hmm. Because I had this um, challenge late last, okay, um, be, um, beginning of last year to um, June this year, where I felt I've been on a certain role for too long and I needed a change. I wanted to do something else. I wanted another another um, unit in, but still in HR, you know, but I didn't get that opportunity. At some point I became disgruntled, you know, and, the, you know, the, the, the unit I wanted to go to, I saw somebody, they brought somebody very new to that role. And I'm like, I, I've been clamoring that, oh, I want this, this, um, this, this, this unit. I want to work in this unit and all. So I, I, I discussed with somebody, I discussed with um, a senior person in, in the organization, but not in HR. And the person was like, oh, why not just have this conversation with your line manager? 
And when I did, the response I got was very, you know, I didn't even know how to explain it because my line manager said, no, I feel your group. I don't want you to leave my team. You know, so I was just like, okay, I didn't know how to manage. I was, I didn't even know how to manage that. So that's why I, I want to ask this question. I don't feel, I don't, I don't know if it's a setback or stagnance. I don't know how to relate to this kind of um, situation. But I recently, like in a month ago, I got a career coach who has been helping me lately to, you know, to help me navigate um, around this. Though I just started the program, but I'm still trying to find my fit, my fit on, you know, achieving this. Thank you very much. Okay. Um... Really, please. Okay, I'm just going to talk around in response to what you said. Um, yes, it is a career setback for you. Uh, why do I say that? Because this is your career journey. It's, it's personal to you. It's private to you. Nobody else is running this race with you. So while some people can look at you on the outside and say, oh, she's employed, she has a regular income, she's in, a, in the career she wants, and you know, they probably wonder why, what's, what's the big deal, you really are working and all. But because you want something different. Um, you, you feel you've kind of outgrown the role that you are in. I call it, you know, it's like you're wearing clothes that are too tight for you. There's, you've grown and you want something to accommodate the growth or, or, or you, want to, you want a space that you can fill into because of the growth that you've endured. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting something different. You know, when you are talking and the, the, about what you did and You've been, you said you've been clamoring to move to something else and it's like nothing has been happening. I suspected that your, your manager didn't want to lose a good hand who they could be comfortable, confident, you know, and trusting in to get a specific job done uh, to someone else or to something else, you know. And uh, sometimes, you know, it's not that these people are intentionally trying to be in our way. You know, but you know, there are some things that they are also looking at that um, make them believe that that is the best direction to go. It's not one I would go uh, do because I recognize that people want to advance in their careers. I think you've taken a lot of good steps. You've gotten a career coach, somebody who can, you know, guide you through. And I do hope that you're getting value from the person because you know that it's not just a question of, of having a coach. It has to be somebody who is actually speaking to your needs at that point of your career, who understands fully what you are going through, all right? Because you know a coach has to be a good fit for you as well. Um, just because somebody is a coach doesn't mean they're the right coach for you. So I'm hopeful that the person that is coaching you is someone that is the right coach for you. Now, people in this situation, they, I mean, it's, it's always contextual, right? But something I usually... Um, would ask the person to do is to consider looking for an outlet for that thing that you want to do that you don't have an opportunity to do. Uh, I'll explain what I mean. So uh, if you can see this virtual background behind me, it's called 20 Talks Talent. And that is a project that I run where I help professionals find their career fit based on their natural abilities and talent. I wasn't doing this prior to COVID, but I always had it in me. I've been doing the job I've been doing for a while, and it had become a little samey to me, the same way yours was to you. And I was looking for an outlet for all that was bubbling inside of me and the things that I, uh, the, the things that I had um, experienced that I felt I wanted to share. So COVID was an opportunity for me to share the knowledge I gained and the experiences I'd had with younger professionals. And that's how 20 Talks Talent started. Now, did my situation change immediately? No, it didn't. But what having an outlet did for me was give me the energy to continue doing what I was doing while working towards doing something else, more in line with my career goals at that stage of my life. So maybe that is something you may want to explore. But I think you're already uh, taking the right steps in having someone guiding you. And like I said, I hope the person is the right fit for you, somebody you connect with and resonate with. But if it will be helpful for you to find another platform to demonstrate those skills that you, you want to demonstrate so that you are building competency in that particular skill while maybe you are seeking another opportunity 
outside the organization or looking for the right opportunity within the organization that you can capitalize on. I hope that has helped you. Thank you so much. So, we quickly take on the feedback or comment from this. Okay, if Oluchi is not with us right now, we'll go to, okay, Oluchi is online. Welcome, Oluchi. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, mine is, okay, I'm sharing and I'm contributing. I want to speak on um, what she said about, uh, I don't know if that's the exact word she used, uh, taking a self audit. Um, sometimes we might be too engrossed with, uh, what we feel others did to us that we might not necessarily um, look at ourselves and find out where we contributed to our own setback. So I'm going to share mine. Um, I'm still on the journey, but somewhere along the line, um, okay, let me say I was an ad hoc staff some years, many, many, many years ago. So, and we were about, uh, 20 on that project. But I had my career path planned for me, what I wanted to achieve and all that. I was now, out of the 20, I was the only person that was converted to a, 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 a full-time staff. This is over 10, 15 years ago. So I don't know. I really don't know if because I was the only one, I was over, I don't know. So I forgot myself. That's what I call it. Because um, I came into that role, say, in May. And May, June, I told myself, no, this, this place is not, is not in line with what I planned for myself. I don't see myself growing on this road. By July, I had started looking for another job. That's over nine, eight years ago. By July, I started looking for another job. But somewhere along the line, I forgot myself. Let me put it that way. And I've been there. So, but somewhere when I speak with my colleagues and we are sharing knowledge and uh, complaints, you know, it took me a while. I think I did that assessment um, two years back and said, no, I had this um, enlightenment two months after I joined this organization. But I forgot to act on it. I forgot myself, or I was just too grateful that. <laughs> Out of 20 people, I was the only one converted to permanent core staff. And I was doing my job. I was getting the performance and all that. But I, let, I left my career path for myself, what I had planned. So it takes us, let's do that self-assessment and be truthful to ourselves to accept where we also failed ourselves, you know? So I take now I take that responsibility and I speak when I speak to my colleagues or to some other people coming up, I say, do this for yourself. Ask yourself the hard question. Where did I contribute to my own career setback to stagnation or something? Because for me, I had a part to play in it. But thankfully, I've woken up and I'm on the journey to better myself. So we need to do that self-assessment and be truthful, truthful to ourselves. It might be difficult, but it's something we need to do. Thank you. Thank you so much for that contribution. All right. Let me just read one or two comments there. Natasha says, your manager should give you the opportunity because it does not give you that opportunity. And you see the opportunity outside, then the company may lose you as a talent. I had a colleague who wanted to Okay, I had a colleague who wanted to move rules, you know, after a while, he was not given the opportunity and he went. Okay, so quickly move on to Oyege. Gift Oyege, please. You are recognized, you have the floor. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good so, evening. Uh, I'm glad to be on the platform. So uh, what I want to share is that currently, I'm kind of having that career um, setback. The reason why I said so is because, well, I actually started, I would say so, because I was working until January this year. Then I resigned because I lost my around October and 
were very close. So I realized that, okay, on the job where I was working, I I didn't have much. To, sometimes I won't have much to do. As an IT team, I won't have much to do. So that didn't give me a ground ground to now renegotiate my salary for a more higher salary and I couldn't explore or do a lot there so because of that I was kind of just like in one position for like three years plus so I realized towards the end of last year I realized that okay is this what I want to keep doing I'm so young so I don't get time but before that um, before I lost my dad I already started my CIPM training but I only wrote the first um, exam which is the intermediate two or so so when I lost him I just totally went down then January I was like okay I want to resign because I was not earning as much as I wanted most times before the end of the month I had already finished my salary so I, I was just I just kept going because the month, most of the fund I was getting I was using we're using it to buy drug or some other thing but still the salary wasn't enough so because I didn't have much to do I couldn't renegotiate so I started looking for another job, but then I didn't have anything to, I don't know. Let me just skip that part. Okay, so January I resigned. And then when, after I resigned, I was like, okay, what do I want to do? This is another year, 2022. Okay, so I wrote down some goals. I was like, okay, let me start looking for another job. But then I just encouraged myself, okay, for me to grow while waiting, continue my CIPM training. So I now took up the CIPM training. I didn't have fund at some point, but thank God now I've been able to finish my um, CIPM training and I'll be inducted by uh, in December. So at least, uh, so what kept me going is the fact that when I first resigned, I didn't, I, I didn't start applying for jobs because I wasn't eager. I was, I didn't have the, I was still, I, I was still in my morning I was still mourning my dad. So I, I was like, okay, I don't want to start a job and I, I am still not, I, I don't put the energy they need. So I start June, I think or so, June. I started now looking for job passively. So when I started, I got up till now, I, mm -hmm. I go for interviews. At some point mm -hmm. I was taking like admin role. Please, can, can, can you still hear me? Life and clear. Thank you. Okay, so at some point I was still, I was just applying for like admin role, which is not really related to HR. But I was like, okay, maybe at this point, that was starting from June. I was like, at this point, I think I need to now get to start working. So I start earning while I'm doing this training. I was just giving myself the courage that, okay, maybe when I get certification, I'll get to learn enough. No, I don't have anybody mentoring me or so, but sometimes when I come across and um, platform where they join and say, okay, they have an HR talk or so discussion, then I join, that's what I do. So, um, but if I have like maybe question, maybe I want to go for an interview, I want some, I want to clarify some things. I just reach out to some people that I know they are HR people. I just ask them this question, but not like mentoring, they're like maybe friends. So, um, okay, so back to what I was saying. Then up to now, I don't have a job yet, but I just keep praying. Meaning when I, when I go for interviews and they don't call me back for the role, even if I think I did my best, I just, because I, I pray to God, I said, God, I don't want to go back. When I resigned from my previous job, I don't want to go back to a job where I will not be happy. I want to be in a, um, I want to work in a good environment. I want to work with good colleagues and all that. So whenever I don't get the job I applied for and maybe they interviewed me for, some of the ones they interviewed me for, I just assure myself that, okay, maybe this is not where God wants me to be yet. So that's how I keep pushing. So what I do is I just try to keep learning and developing myself. Sometimes if I see what part is, like now on this platform now, there's some things I've jotted down. I just, you know, go back to it and try to see how I can use it to improve myself. So far, so basically, what I'm what I've shared right now is the fact that okay, yes, I'm in that um, I'm currently in that career setback period, but I'm still also encouraging myself. Mm -hmm. But um, I just maybe there are other ideas or there are other um, advice you can also give me to try and improve or help me to 
to to overcome or get over this period. I I think I've I think I've gotten some points from Miss Tony, but if there if there's any other one, I wouldn't mind to hear. So thank you. Thank you so much, Oye, for sharing. Okay, I'm sure more points and tips will come your way. Also, check on the chat box. People are also dropping comments. We'll quickly go to the intelligent and delectable Abimbola. Okay. Good evening, sir. Good evening, everyone. Okay, can anybody hear me? That's not clear. Please go ahead. Proceed, please. Okay, okay, good mm -hmm. evening. I'll just quickly share mine. Um, I think my career setback was I was a cost. I made a wrong decision because while I was growing up, I have parents who were giving me two different advices. My mom was giving me advices as to marriage. You are nothing if you're not married. My dad was giving me advices as to grass career. I want you as my only daughter to be a career woman. I want you to be there at the top. So by the time I finished NYC and um, I got a job immediately. After that, I, I worked with them for a few months. I got another job. And I was doing well. I was earning a, a, a good salary. I was working in Green Spring schools. And then um, my fiance started complaining that my job is taking my time. And I remember at my mom's um, counsel, you're nothing if you're not married. So some things happened and I left my job. I walked away, in fact, I burnt the bridge because I didn't even say goodbye to my boss. I just packed my bag. They gave me um, accommodation, they gave me everything, but I just packed my bag and I just followed my friends. And then something happened and um, I didn't push through with the wedding and um, I, I, I lost everything. I didn't have a job anymore. I was feeling at that time because it's, as, as a young man, he was an employer of labor. So I felt that if he's complaining about my job and my mom is saying that you're nothing without being married, even if you're a career woman, and then he can take care of me, then I can be okay. So about, by the time I see one or two things and I couldn't push through with the marriage and I left him, so I was back to square one and I was searching for a job or through Lagos and I didn't get a job. So I went for my master's. After my master's, I still didn't get a job. So what I did is um, I got a job as, I saw an advert, they were looking for a nanny. I was already a master's degree holder. They were looking for a nanny and um, the salary was 75K. I looked at it and I was like, and they were offering an accommodation. At that time I was in Ibadan. I was getting offer in Lagos, but there was no accommodation and I didn't have anyone I could live with. But this one was, was offering 75,000. But a nanny job, like it was so, so, it was devastating, but they were offering uh, accommodation. So I picked up my CV, I removed my master's degree, I removed my um, BSc degree, and um, I removed some of the um, qualifications and I sent it and they picked me and I started working with my boss. And then that was where my, my um, I started and then after a while, my boss saw me and he was like, there was one day he was looking for, I think I forgot, he was trying to get some things done on the computer and he wasn't able to, to do it. And I, I asked him um, what was the problem because he was worried in the house and oh, and um, the child I was taking care of is a grown up daughter. It's just like, uh, um, as, by the time, anytime he, he, she's not around, I like assist my boss. So I asked him what was wrong and he, he, he told me, I, had already, I already did the um, computer um, education. So I helped him. After I helped him, he was like, I've been bother come here. I think there's more to you, I've been watching you. I think they, there was, there is more to you you didn't tell me. Who are you? So I felt that this is the time I need to open up. Maybe God is trying to like open the door for me here. And I opened up for him. And there was, um, I, I stopped working with him as a nanny and then he employed me as his personal assistant. And then I started working you know, in a proper office. And then I worked there, I worked there until I started climbing. Like I started from the scratch again. I started climbing, climbing the ladder, climbing the ladder. And then until I got my current job three years ago, 
where I'm currently the HR administrator. So my advice is just um, for people who are probably stagnant or um, uh, having career setback, don't see yourself as a failure. You might even be the cause, just like myself. You might be the one who had um, make the wrong decision, but don't beat yourself up about it. Just carry yourself again. Start from the scratch. Pick up your CV, dust it, do, what, do whatever it is you can do. Start from the scratch and before you know it, just keep learning. Before you know it, the Lord will pick your call. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Abim Bola. Even though I've known you for a while, I never knew this part of, um, of your story. You know, Abim Bola is one of the administrators on the mentorship group. I feel very humbled and very sober. Thank you so much, Tony, for booking this um, particular conversation because how you delivered this session has encouraged people to share very vulnerable aspects of their life. Multiple stories, multiple lessons, are encapsulated in this very thing. You know, sometimes our career can be intertwined with our relationship, our marriages, and other aspects of our lives. Thank you so much, Abibola. That in itself is a story that's worth celebrating. God bless you. I literally shared it here, just listening to you. Okay, God, mm. one thing I would like to say is that the right for me which is your light will not help you to, will not, you know, inhibit, will be a catalyst, an enzyme, something to mm. prepare you. All right. Thank you so much, Abimbala. Thank you so, so, so much for sharing. Before we allow first us to talk about more on the chat, over to you, please. Okay, can you hear me, please? Okay. Please, can you hear me? Hello, please, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you loud oh, and clear. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much, Abimbala. I'm going to join why and thank you so much for being so vulnerable. In fact, he said he, he shared it here. I was I was shaking inside and asking myself if if I mean could I have taken such a bold decision? Could I have 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 turned around from such a state that people from you know looking from the outside they say was such a you know a, a low place to be? Uh, such your courage is indeed humbling. I celebrate you. And I just want to reemphasize that anybody else who thinks that they hit rock bottom, um, this is a story that is inspirational. And I can tell you that um, there's no way you can't bounce back from if you have the determination, the focus, and the faith, you know, to push through. Thank you so much for sharing, Adimbala. So there's a question here that says, uh, I'm experiencing, I think I'm experiencing a career setback because I'm stuck in my current job without much to do or a raise. So I'm trying to switch my career path into HR, looking for jobs in HR. Just finished CIPM but lost on how to start or know all I need to grow in HR. Um, I don't know who this person is, but I'd like to say that you're in the right place and you're part of the right community. Um, there are quite a number of people who uh, want to transition to HR. And while HR deals with you know, people matters, there is an attitude that is um, required to do that sort of role, that kind of role. Uh, of course, the specifications are, are helpful, necessary, and they help to, to strengthen your, your, your you as a professional. But I ho hopefully you've dealt with all those questions and you've answered those questions uh, already about whether or not it's the right career for you. But one of the things that happen, and this is generally speaking, because individually speaking, I mean, somebody who, who heard your question might offer you a job right from this very place. That can happen, right? But generally speaking, when people have had a career up to a point and want to switch to HR, 
uh, the usual thing that um, they have to think about is how to gain some form of HR experience. Uh, because people who hire uh, experienced hands for the role of HR would like somebody, either take somebody who's fresh out of school or have somebody who has some HR experience. So if you don't have any HR experience yet, uh, what I would say is try to see how you can gain some. Now, this is not as difficult to do as somebody, some people might think, because they'll say, oh, if somebody isn't willing to hire me, how do I gain the experience? But there are several opportunities that you could um, take advantage of to gain the experience. So I don't know, uh, maybe you attend the church, you could explore that. Is there room in your church for someone to work in HR? If you're trying to gain some experience from their volunteering. Uh, during your leave periods, there are many um, non-governmental organizations that will be happy for the help. If there's an opportunity there, you might want to explore that. Um, but one of the things that I think that might be helpful is if you can find someone in the HR space already who is willing to take you under their wing and you can support that person in their own um, programs or their own vision, you know, what they want to do in HR space and learn HR concepts, HR processes uh, while working with that person. It helps to uh, fast track your knowledge. And if you're able to demonstrate uh, a competence while working with that person, that person might be willing to sponsor you into an HR role. Okay. Um, and then nowadays, there's also remote you know, opportunities. So you just went to CIPM, you have some grounding in HR. There are remote opportunities that don't require huge amounts of experience to do the job. For someone who is willing, who is bold, who is confident, who has the right support system, can sell themselves and take that remote opportunity. So there are few options available to you. But one of the things I would encourage you and say is that don't, because of what you are looking for, um, slack in what you currently have. Because sometimes I know someone who is in my community, the T3 uh, community, who made the switch to HR in the job she was currently, in, in the organization she was currently working in. She was working, she's working in a bank as a front office person. And she told her boss she had an interest, or rather she was going to the HR department, tell them what she had an interest, she had an interest, she had an interest. They'd give her, they, they seemed open, you know, uh, but they had their apologies in the bank, so it wasn't so straightforward. But she was persistent, she shared with her boss, and suddenly there was an opening in the HR team. And because she had demonstrated an interest, you know, she had gone to offer help, she had, you know, um, been visible, they invited her to come and take up the role. So now she's still working in the same organization, but she's now in HR. So there are a few options available to you, but don't because of what you're looking for, you know, unappreciate what you have. You don't know maybe that organization you are in could be your first step into the HR uh, uh, profession. Maybe you want to have a conversation with your, your HR manager. If you're that sort of person who are happy to listen to you and are receptive, you might find that that may be where you start off your HR career. But if not, you can render some assistance to them. Let them know you're, you're open to learning and if there's anything you can do to help support their um, objectives there, um, you're happy to do it. And it, you know, you know, things can only go up from there. I hope some of the things are I suggested might be helpful to you. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. Very profound response to that uh, particular question. Okay, Deborah Dumbri also sharing insights on the chat box. Please try to follow the chat box, but let me quickly read Deborah's comment here. First, let's be on standby. You are going to speak next. I'll say a few things. Then we'll take closing comments from our esteemed, distinguished highly sought after facilitator for tonight. Deborah says that for people trying to start up a career in HR, learn from Abimbola's story. She was courageous to start from her. You not necessarily start as a nanny, nanny, but you can start with maybe a little pay or you volunteer or a pay and then from there you can go. First us, if you are with us, we are ready for you. 
no first loss. Okay, I, we seem to have a take first loss by the drop of, of, of the call. So before we take um, closing remarks and comments um, from Oluwatoyin, and then we wrap it uh, up. Let me just say one or two things, you know, this with respect to this. Uh, okay, first us, please speak if you can hear me. Hello, first us. I will ask for the last time. First us, if you can hear me, please speak. He's on mute, but I think there's a problem with the mute. Okay, uh -huh. Okay. This will be a problem with this network. All right. Thank you so much, Festus, for your interest. Uh, hopefully, some other time you'll be able to share your thoughts or please type in your thoughts in the chat box. I will do well to, to read it. Please type your comments in the chat box. All right. So, for example, I, I remember um, back in the day, you know, I, I came out with a second class lower degree. Okay. Yeah, not the best of degrees. Of grades, but maybe not also necessarily the worst of grades too. But one thing I discovered, you know, I was serving in, in Taraba State. Back then, we used to get Tuesday guidance on Wednesday or Thursday. Taraba was not far away. So at the NCCF lodge, all the couples would converge on the Tuesday guidance and we peruse it together. Then I went through one of the adverts, um, particularly mobile producing. And they listed a number of numeric um, numeric courses, for example, economics, statistics, those kind of courses, computer science. And the first sentence, or you know, what do you call it now? A bullet point says two one. I was about to be put off because I got a two two. And the very next line said, a two two with a master's can apply. Trust me, the next master's form. I picked it up. Of course, I didn't go because it was at Federal University of Technology in Adamawa. And my parents said, no, if you stay too long in the north, you probably settle there and marry there and the likes. But <laughs> when there is a setback, I could have focused on the two, two, but there was a master's like I could do to remedy it. Eventually, I did an MSc and then I didn't stop. I did an, an MBA. And some people feel, oh, why, why do you need two masters? I said they can increase. The bottleneck or the entry requirements. I don't want to be caught with that. Of course, I'm doing my page. They have been on it for five years. Well, you can give me a PhD in strike right now because I'll spend more time on strike than on the PhD program. But that's on a lighter note. Don't be fixated on this setback. In fact, that setback is a sign to you mm -hmm. that either there are opportunities you are ignoring that you should pay attention to, or there are talents you should pursue developing. There may also be relationships in your life that you will need to open up. Now, Tony said something very profound. Mentorship, mentorship, mentorship. Coaching, coaching, coaching. But let me also add here. Sometimes, you know, it's very easy to say, oh, I want to get me passion to be my mentor. He's also my mentor. But let me tell you something. There's also what we call peer mentoring. There's also what we call reverse mentoring. Some of us, the most the guidance we will require for that quantum leap may come from a junior. So don't be fixated that until Oluwato is your mentor, or Oluyemi Adiosu is your mentor, or Leslie George. And all these people are fantastic and great. Sometimes it's, you may get that push or that instruction or advice from somebody you will not even formally tag as your mentor. It may look like a very casual conversation. It can be an aunt, it can be a friend. It can be somebody that is not even a professional. They will just say something like, why don't you try this? Or have you considered this? All right, please, let's be very open-minded, okay? So that we'll be able to turn whatever situation it is negative into a, a, a flexible one. I'll say this, and this is deep, okay? If you can catch it, you will better for it. Anytime it seems that you're either stagnant or retrogressing or not making progress in your career, that is one of the things to look around and ask yourself, who can you help? And when I say who can you help, it doesn't necessarily have to be cash. You may have time, you may just volunteer in the second school around you 
in a primary school around you, your neighbor's children, just, you know, that is not normally the time to be helping others, but that is the best time to help others. Because as you begin to do things that are selfless, your appreciation for opportunities will change. All right. I like to say that everybody you see today that we celebrate, even on this call, are going through something, have gone through something, and will go through something. The English word breakthrough means that you exerted energy and force through something to get a result. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't expect we will have this many people on this call because this particular course or session or topic did not look like our traditional domain area. But it's interesting and amazing that so many people decided to join this. And I'm happy. I thank everybody who has contributed, who has shared their hearts, who have thought. One of the things we try to do at HR Mentorship is that we realize that HR people need HR. So yes. as a community, we are our HR. You want to cry, you want to rant, you want to smile, you need a shoulder to lean on, you can count on any and every of us. Thank you so, so much. I'll hand over control to Luatui as she rounds up with our closing remarks and thoughts. Join us tomorrow, 7 p.m. And also next tomorrow, 7 p.m., we'll have sessions for you. Tomorrow, we'll be having overview of HR audit. You won't want to miss it. Again, we are on YouTube where we have uploaded all the different webinars we've done so far, including the one we are doing tonight. Please watch out for them. Go there, listen, and pay attention. Oluwatoyin, thank you for coming. You have the floor, and you'll be closing this session for us. Thank you so much, my sister. Thank you. There's so much wisdom in what you said. And what is, especially about peer-to-peer -peer mentoring or reverse mentoring. Um, I think Sess also had his hand up. I don't know if his network is better now. Sess, do you quickly want to uh, see if we, can, if we can hear you now? I've actually taken him off. I suspect he may be... It may not be. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, Thank I see. You. Okay. All right. So, in rounding up, I will say this. Uh, maybe re emphasize this is what I would say. Career setbacks are a given. They're going to happen a couple of times along the course of your career. But guess what? The more resilience you build, the better you get at handling them with grace. And with every setback that you encounter, you shine the torch for someone else who is coming behind you. Thank you once again for um, all your contributions. I've been so lifted by every single person. Uh, it's all part of our story. Like uh, YA said as well, every single person that you, you look up to has a story to tell. And this is just you writing your own story. Thank you so much again. Have a good evening and a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much. So let's show some love to Oluwatoyin. Use the emoticons, or you can type in a chat message. Let's show her some love. She has had a very you know, long weekend or long week. Yeah, she's here at the twilight of the week, you know, sharing knowledge with us. 